In the last episode, I mounted the glass overflow, started the plumbing, and began painting the tank. In this episode, I will finish the plumbing, finish painting the tank, and make an overflow cover. the decision to remove all of the sand out of my tank and go bare bottom. Since then, I have received many compliments, as well as many questions on how I painted my tank. I really do love the look of sand, but hate the detritus, cleaning the sand, etc. When I very first set up my tank over a decade ago, I painted the bottom white. I've tricked a handful of friends who actually thought there was sand in the tank. I just want to clear up how I painted my tank. It seems as though some thought I removed everything inside of the tank, spray painted it, and then moved everything back into the tank, which just did not happen. I am at the point now where I'm going to paint the bottom of the tank, and I will show you how I did it. And now with the bottom of the tank all wiped off and clean and ready for paint, and the overflow section where I don't want white to be taped off, it's now ready to paint. First, I'm just going to lay down a very thin coat. And just like that, the first coat is done. So now i got to wait for this to dry and probably put two more coats on. And the second coat. Everything is dried. I added four coats to the underside of the aquarium and I added five or six coats to the back of the aquarium. And as you can see, you can still see some light bleed through, but it's not that bad. So now I'm just going to flip this thing over very carefully again. First, I'm going to remove this tape. As you can see it made a very nice line right on the piece of glass so all you'll see is white and with the tank flipped over everything looks pretty good so far but what I have to do is actually remove the tank put it outside for a minute and drill this hole out a little bit bigger so the other side of the union can fit through this hole so if I have to remove that piping uh, it'll just be a lot easier so now I just got to move the tank over there and so now that our spacer is nice and dry, I need to mount that right there. And I made a mark. So that mark has to meet that mark, like so. So now I just have to drill these holes out and drill this to the top, and that part will be done. So what I did is I made five holes in the center hole that I can line up with that mark, and I'll be able to see through it and line it up with that mark. And these two, I drilled a hole inside and then countersunk so that you'll never even see those holes. But those holes are where the screws will go. So I can screw that into place. And then those two holes are gonna be what's gonna hold in the bracket. And 
now what I'm doing is just continuing the plumbing of this pipe going down. That wasn't supposed to happen. That's not good. So I just did my best to cleaning it off. Looks like I did a good job. And um, it didn't get on the threads and that's the most important part. And it didn't get on the bottom base. Maybe a little bit did, but I'll just sand that off and it'll be fine. So now that will connect to that union. I just need to measure the pipe going out of this pipe into the pump of the sump. And now with our pipe in place, and mounted where it needs to go, we can start making our measurements from this union to the top of the pump. And so the next thing I'm measuring out is, in the future, I'm probably gonna want a reactor or something else in here. So I'm gonna put a T fitting on here, and that is gonna go in between these two. And out of here would go to a reactor or something else in the future. But there is this plexiglass piece. And that plexiglass piece rests on this part of the sump and on this part of the sump. So I don't want this part to be any higher. I want the piece to be here so when I put that piece of plexiglass on, this doesn't stick up. All you'll see is the pipe. So I have my measurements and I'm going to start cutting that out and I'm going to start piecing this all together. pipe can go in this direction, that direction, come out this way, make a left so it's not in the way of anything. But that's a perfect measurement. And now that we have our piece in place, now this will be able to slide over and into place. But we need to make a measurement on this piece to cut out about that much. So that much will be missing. So when we put this in place, it'll just slide in place and it'll be done. So now I just got to get my measurements, cut this piece out. And here's just another little small tip. Oh, yeah. If you're using anything that you've painted, using this blue tape sometimes will, like if you put it on and you take it off, sometimes it'll pull the tape off. So in that situation, what I do is I just wrap it around clothing and take it off and repeat that process maybe like two or three times until it gets less sticky and what happens is when you take it off it takes the fiber off of your clothes so when you go to put it on it'll stay in place it also won't take the paint off with it and now with our piece cut let's see how well the measurement i did so that'll just slide into place like that all right pretty good looking pretty good Probably just need to trim a little bit, but other than that, right on the money. It actually just works better if it's like this. Right into place. And here's another tip. If you need to drill a bigger hole, so let's say I have this size drill bit. I need to drill this out. There's no way for this to drill through without just rattling all around. So go ahead and take a scrap piece of wood, drill your hole through it, and then use that as a template to drill your hole. It's still gonna move around, but it'd be a lot easier with it than without it. And now with our hole drilled out, our union will slip out of there with no problem which is gonna make it a lot easier for the future if you ever have to service any of these pipes. And now I'm just finishing up this last piece of plumbing. And after this, this back section is done. So this is sitting a little cockeyed just because I need to trim a piece of wood down there. And that's why it's sitting cockeyed, because I need to cut this piece a little bit lower, probably down there. And after a lot of cutting and measuring, the back is finally done. It's mounted in place, and the back is done. 
So now all I have to do if I want to service this is just take this union off, drop it through, and it is a done deal. to my liking taken off the next thing i'm working on is an overflow cover so remember the lexan i bought i'm going to be using the same thing and what this is going to do is it's going to sit in here underneath of this lip because on top of this lip what i'm going to do in the future is have a net top so you know fish don't jump out and nothing falls in there so this is actually going to sit underneath of that and um, since there's caulk in the corner, what I have to do is take off just a little bit of this corner, which I've done here. Now, this piece of Lexan fits in there perfectly. So now all I have to do is get these measurements and cut this out. great fit and so since I want this to sit up here under this ledge what I need to do is take my ABS and cut out pieces that'll fit into here and act as a ledge so that when I slide this in it has somewhere to rest so that the water can go over Now that we have our cut piece of ABS plastic, what that's going to do is that it's going to rest right up in there. Now in order to do this, we need to put our plexiglass top in all the way up against this ledge and then press the ABS plastic up against that to make a tight fit. And then that's where it'll live. And then we just need to get some caulk on this glass and on this piece of ABS plastic. So then when we insert our cover, it just slides into place like so. Check my measurements. So this needs to come up a little bit. Now this needs to come up a lot. All right, that looks good. And the next thing we do when we are satisfied is put on some tape and then wait for this to dry. overflow pipe is installed there's three and two eighth inches from the top of this ceiling and the top of this so I need to cut a bunch of pieces of wood to make a bracket in here so that this can fit on and be screwed to the top of the cabinet so what I did is I took two pieces of wood uh, cut them to length and then drilled two holes countersunk those two holes and now I'm going to drill these into place Now that's my riser. It's going to go right here. So I'm just going to give this a little sanding. And that's going to go straight to paint. Hi 
I really do hope you are enjoying the videos. And if you are, please like, subscribe, and ring that bell to receive notifications on new videos. It's completely free and a great way to support the channel.